I wanted to create a controller for this nice laser that the default cube had showed us to create. By the way, check out his tutorial for an in-depth explanation. Today I'm going to focus on how to create this handy controller because working with the vector input is just not intuitive at all. Understanding the align Euler to vector node is key for this. Instead of telling an object to rotate according to set degrees, this node tells the object to align itself towards a point in 3D space. The target position is a point in space, an attribute made of three channels, the x, y, z. This is our vector. The node also tells the object along which axis it should point at the target. Uh, like I said before, this is just a nightmare to use. At least that's what I think, so that's why I wanted to create a controller for this. So let's see how we can create a simple node setup to fix this. Perfect. Now, we're going to focus on this part, because we don't want to use a vector. We're going to use a vector, but we're going to use an external vector we can influence in the viewport. So what we can do is bring our laser controller. I just created a cube. Sorry, let's pin this. I created a laser controller that is just a cube in the viewport. And what we want to do is we want to use that location in the vector. But that doesn't do anything. What we need to do instead is first I like to realize that instance. I'm not sure that's really needed in this case, but I'm just, I like to be sure. Um, we want to get the position of this, so that is shift a search position, there you go. I like to capture this position. So with this set, set of float, we can only have a single value. Uh, of course, a vector has three values, the x, y, z, for example, uh, and we need to set it to vector right here. Feed the realized instances into the geometry socket and the position into the value. You can leave this to points. And when I place this attribute into the vector, you can see that it's still not working. We even got an indication right here. It's a red line. And we got a warning right here. The attribute output cannot be used without a geometry output. So basically we need a node to convert this geometry data and also input this vector data and combine that into uh, one single output. This diamond socket indicates that the data is different for each point. And since we have a cube that has, of course, eight points, eight vertices, it doesn't automatically know which point to use as the vector position. So what we need to do is we need to convert this diamond into a circle. The circle indicates that every point on this mesh has the same data. What we can do is we can look up a attribute statistics node, uh, then place it in between here, set it to vector, of course, get the geometry and the attribute put them in their respective sockets. If we place the mean into the vector right here and the mean into the ray direction right there, uh, now we have a working controller. Okay, and so with this in place, we can of course, and I already did this, but you can go in and select, for example, a noise modifier and have it go up and down just in a random motion. You can even include other axes as well uh, if you want to. That's totally up to you. Let me know if you are interested in seeing how I did this as well. Uh, adding multiple layers. Sorry, adding, <laughs> I guess there are layers as well, but adding multiple lasers. And also how to implement that, um, yeah, sort of volumetric plane in between there. Don't know what to call it, but you know what I mean. It's interactive as well. And if you don't want to know how to do that, let me know because I can show you that in next week's video. And just as a bonus, I show you how I did this explainer animation I did because there's a slight twist in there. I got this target. All the instances are pointing in that direction, just not all individually pointing at it uh, because these on the right side should be pointing towards the left and of course vice versa. What I thought normally you would do the same thing. Uh, here you see that I didn't actually need to capture attribute node. I found it out later too. Besides that, this is basically the same setup. I got the object, which is the, the target, sorry, which is the target right here. I got the attribute statistics set to uh, mean or median, whatever you like. They both do the same in this case. Um, then I have a rotate instances node right here. If I plug a random value node in there, set it to rotation, you can see that they rotate individually, all in a random direction. So they can rotate individually, except they don't do it right now. We need to do a little bit of math, the easiest ever. We just need a vector math node. Place that in between here. So we're gonna grab this object's location and subtract that by the position of the 
grid. To be more specific, when used in combination with instances, the position outputs the local space of each instance. And with that, I can now move my target around and they are all pointing towards my, uh, my target. Just thought I'd show you that. Let me know if you want to learn more about uh, this complete setup. And um, yeah, till the next one. Ciao.